that makes sense. Um, I think that luckily I've been a part of so many like grassroots communities where um, artists and and organizers really try our best um, to get arts into education, uh, into the community, and um, and artists are the organizers sort of fighting for themselves in a way as well. So. Um, I think it'll just always kind of be a battle, and no matter where you go, there's some form of um, of support, uh, depending on how well you're you're doing your own job. Gotcha. And uh, one of the things mm-hmm. we talked about on this show in the past, I was just curious, and actually I'd like to hear from both you and Lama Rod, is uh, how we're doing in terms of supporting the arts on an educational standpoint. Because one of the things that we had on the show before, even in conversations with Desan, Reese Palmer, and others, is this feeling that the world in general is starting to push back on supporting the arts and not necessarily giving it the kind of support that they used to, like pulling back from the arts program in public schools and not doing as much as they used to. And I would argue the same thing even with philosophy cause, and uh, religious thoughts mm-hmm. and things of that nature because I went to, I was fortunate enough to have a Jesuit education having gone to Marquette, which meant that, as I jokingly tell people, I actually had two minors because I had the poli sci minor, which is my minor to go with my journalism degree. But at Marquette, you were required to have, I think it was 21 hours of what amounted to theology and philosophy mix. So if you know anything about mm-hmm. minors, 21 hours is pretty much a minor. So I think it was like, I want to say it might have been 12 hours of theology and nine hours of philosophy, or it might have been the flip of that. But either way, it added up to 21 hours where you had to think about these critical thinking kind of things. And that was just kind of the aspect of the way the Jesuits do their education. So. I was just wondering, both of you, how you think we're doing as a Western society in terms of our education and in terms of using the arts and just doing critical thinking kind of thought in the school system, whether that's religion or whatever. Because I know there's a whole conversation about separation of religion and uh, politics, and sometimes that means separation of religion in school. But some of the things that you need to know philosophically, you probably can get in school. I was just wondering what some of your thoughts were, both of you. Um, yeah, I, maybe I, I guess. Oh, okay. oh, yeah. Sorry. Go ahead, Lamarad, and then oh, I'll no, bring in a G. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. I mean, I, you know, I grew up uh, coming up through school, from elementary school to college in the arts. You know, so I was in music, I was in theater, um, I was writing. Um, you know, you know, in the theater setting. You know, and like I, I don't know how would how. I would have ever experienced the kind of life I'm experiencing now without that training, but and without the access to that, you know, within the school system. Um, and I think right now what I'm seeing, you know, particularly kind of through my lens, um, working with um, a lot of educators, like bringing contemplative work into the classroom, you know, it's that like, you know, we're losing in many ways, like the importance of arts education, you know, it, it's not as generative and productive um, as, you know, some of the work around science and math or the STEM, you know, some of the STEM subjects, you know. Um, and I just, you know, I'm just really interested in, like, restoring kind of a really balanced, holistic um, um, education in the public school system, not just with the arts and sciences and math, but also with, like, physical education, um, with, um you know, with uh, education around, uh, like, uh, uh, philosophy and ethics and government um, so that we can really be informed about our lives and have really, you know, access to everything that we have access in order to be our full selves and our best selves. So, um, yeah, Definitely. that art is incredibly important, yeah. And, Gene, did yeah, you have anything you want to add to that? Yeah, I'd piggyback off of that as well. Like, um, not just the, the arts is kind of an easy answer. Of like, based on what I've heard from my uh, friends that are on the ground, it's like, yes, um, we definitely have support in the arts and education. But um, piggybacking off of what was just said, just like, greater than that, physical education, education, and greater than that, just our general approach to education and how um, we're trying to support young people and thinking critically and thinking for themselves and um, sort of like a better moral foundation. And um, I think just a general approach to education um, needs to be fixed and revamped. Um, and it's difficult for me to sort of speak on it 
boldly because I'm not a teacher and I'm not on the ground. Um, and I know that it's just a, it's an, an incredibly difficult position in the world. And so um, I, I wasn't trained in, in that way in the schools and going through public schools. I sort of, um, I, I hated like, I hated art, visual art after uh, my sophomore teacher um, in high school. And it was like one of these classic kind of public school settings where, um, uh, I didn't feel I was like supported as just a young artist that wanted to experience the way I wanted to experience. And, uh, and so, um, yeah, I feel like the arts, um, in general, there needs to be focused, but I think, I, I feel like the, the best stuff comes from just the grassroots, um, uh, movements and nonprofit organizations that, that kind of wiggle their way into the schools and the curriculums and after school programs. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of, it, it definitely takes takes everybody's help. For sure. Oh, yeah, definitely. So I know we've got some other people that will be joining the conversation as well, so I want both of y'all to stay on the line and everything. But before I let you go, G, and I might get you more than once, um, is there like an identity poem that you would like to share with the folks that is one of your trademark poems? I know that you have a lot of them that deal with identity, so I don't know if you've got anything that you can spit off the top of your head that you would love to oh, share. Oh, man, you know? I wasn't prepared. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't fair. I haven't spit a poem in a long time. But I gotta get back on it. All right. Well, hopefully you can be able to give us one of those at a uh, later time because we would love to have you. The audience, I'm sure, would love to hear some of the poems that you have done in the past as well as some of your hip hop works and things of that nature. If you think of something that really triggers you know, during the rest of the course of the conversation to feel like giving us a, a shared uh, bar or two, we would love to hear it. But, uh, Otherwise, we'll just uh, keep things moving along. But, you know, I love hearing all the times that you do the poems, particularly those that deal around identity and things of that nature. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sorry about that, man. But uh, hopefully uh, folks can come out to um, the Hay Town on July 31st. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's going to be all the all the, the dopest MCs from the Triangle Spit and Acapella. Um, and, uh, yeah, hopefully folks can make it out. Cool. And tell people about that show on the 31st. And also, uh, if you want to, if you can share your, if you had any experiences, because I know that you've definitely dealt with um, Pierce, which means that you might have had dealings with his dad and everything, who, as I mentioned at the beginning, we unfortunately lost recently. But uh, mm-hmm. if you want to share any of that experience as well as just your experience of uh, what the show is going to be, share that with us. We would love to hear that. Yeah. Um, so because I grew up, kind of spitting at the hay tie um i wanted to have an evening where we uh invite all the, the dopest mcs in the area and hip-hop artists to come perform acapella it's a bill of about 25 artists um everybody doing a couple minutes acapella and just wanted um i wanted to provide a space where mcs could feel the energy of like a poetry event and the spoken word event um where you feel like your word and your craft and your presence is really felt and really heard and really respect it. And so we'll be donating 20% of proceeds back to the Hayta. Um, and uh, there's going to be the Valley Rockers and some Trumpers as well. It should be a really um, awesome event. And Pierce Freeline um, is, is on the bill as well. We're trying to get confirmation to see if Ms. Nina can, can um, join along as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, a huge, a lot of respect for the Freeline family. I never actually had a chance to meet Mr. Phil. Um, but uh, over here on the West Coast, man, I can definitely feel all of their morning um, for the Freelot family. So um, my regards to the family. And, uh, yeah, hopefully it'll be a night to remember. Definitely. I'm sure there will be a night to remember. Hopefully you can stay on the line here. We do have some other callers that are going to be joining us, a lot dealing with stuff that you may be interested in as well. So as long as you can stay on the line, we'd appreciate it. And, uh, Dean, who else we got on? Right now we have Nicole standing by, and she will be in. And just Are you enjoying the smoothest conversation in podcasting? Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Hi, this is DJ Smooth Jazz, syndicated radio host and co-owner of Portfolio Group, LLC. Your smooth jazz lifestyle and entertainment group with offices in Durham, North Carolina. Portfolio Group, LLC specializes in promoting the lifestyle of smooth jazz listeners with the promotion of smooth jazz events and the distribution of African-American-owned wines. For more information... PortfolioGroupLLC.com, or you can swing by my secondary site, 
djsmoothjazz.com. Now back to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Okay, Nicole, welcome to Straight Talk with Dean and Mark. Thanks for holding. You are now on the line. Hey, hey guys, Nicole, what's I'm going so on? hey, not much. Hey. Nicole, I'm so glad you could join us. And we've actually got um, G uh, had to get off the line. One of our talented poets is out of the West Coast now, but originally from the Durham area and has been involved with sacrificial poets and things of that nature. But we do still have Lama Rod on. And part of what you do, I think Lama Rod will really be impressed with, because Lama Rod is a Buddhist practitioner and things of that nature. But I know that you are into real estate, but also interior design. But part of what you do with your interior design is trying to make sure that the house has, like, a little bit of um, – unity to it, like a little bit of that, that you are connected to your house. Not, the house isn't just like an empty space as a lot of people treat their house, and it, it actually is connected to you and reflects your personality. Because I also know that you're very much into the whole Mix Breyer kind of studies and things of that nature. And actually, I read that. I actually went and did my Mix Breyer test because I couldn't remember what they were going to say I was. So I actually right? went and did the test, and it, it came out to me as they being a uh, – Campaigner, I think it's the label that they gave me and everything. Which, as much as I do, I can see that it says your personality is campaigner, and it says sixty percent extroverted, sixty percent intuitive, forty-four uh, uh, percent, fifty-six percent feeling. So intuitive versus uh, observant, extrovert, extroverted versus introverted, and I think I came out as fifty-five percent feeling on the nature part of it, and I'm trying to scale down to see what the rest of the results were. But I know that that's part of what you do with the way that you just operate houses and everything. Cause, oh, it says 53% uh, prospecting on the tactics and uh, 68% turbulent on identity, which actually that kind of surprised me, but it was a choice between <laughs> assertive and turbulent. So it came out 68% turbulent. So that's the way I came out was on that particular test. It gave me an E-N-S-P-T, yep. and that they yep. labeled as a campaigner. That's the campaigner. That's what uh, some of our politicians are. I think uh, Barack Obama might be an ENFP, if I wow, so remember same, correctly. Wow. Pardon? It's just so good. Yep. The same personality type as Barack Obama. Who knew? <laughs> there you go. Well, it's so cool. music goes to how we process information, right? We look at it as our relationship with work, right? Every company gives us this test to figure out who we're going to work with and to better understand us. But I think a lot of people don't understand that this also affects not just how you re- interact with other people, but also how you interact in your home. And, yeah, I'm all about the individuality in our house because I feel like this is your most sacred space. This is your country. This is your culture. And we so easily are subjected to trends and to the style that we see on TV or in the shopping mall that we basically erase ourselves from our own houses. And I want to put us back in our own house, and I want to take it further than that. I want to figure out, like, how do we find a house that perfectly – that suits our needs by function, and then how do we decorate it and design it so it also reflects who we are and who our family is and supports us emotionally? So I'm, like, taking home to a and, whole new level here. Yeah, and it seems like you've definitely done that. And a lot of times, unfortunately, you're right, because, like I said, I live in an apartment complex, and a lot of times – People in apartment complexes are just in the houses. I've got friends that have their own houses. You go into the house, and you know, they may have an item here or an item there that you see that item, and you're like, okay, that kind of reflects their personality. Like, I know I've got a lot of books, and I am a reader, so they may see that and think that that reflects my personality, and it's probably got way too much clutter, and I do sometimes get clutter-minded. So that's probably a reflection of my personality as well. But how do you shake this in terms of, like, reaching people and helping them understand that they need to have more of their own identity in their house. And how does that work in terms of philosophy? Because I'm thinking that probably, uh, La Mirada, if you're still there, does your house look like a Buddhist house? Yes. Well, you know, I, you know, I absolutely agree. It has to work. Your living space needs to reflect the long. I think a living space um, we return to in order to be revitalized, to be nourished, to be taken care of. And, like, you just need the stuff, you need the things, you need the colors, you need the arrangement um, of the space in order to meet you and offer you what you need in order, in order to, like, just be out in the world. You know, so my space is a reflection of my personality. You know, I have pictures, like, religious pictures, that just I cannot 
Democracy altars. I love altars. 